Hi, my name is Vic Veer. I'm an ears, nose and throat surgeon working at the Royal National ENT Hospital in central London. Now, many of you know me as someone who talks about snoring and sleep apnea, but today I'm going to talk to you about tinnitus because some of you may know that in 2008, I got tinnitus and then after a few months of work, I managed to get rid of it. So this is my story, my experience of how I solved my tinnitus and hopefully I can impart some of that information to you. Now, I haven't heard my tinnitus for 10, 15 years now, but that doesn't mean that you watching this video will be completely cured. I mean, this is just my experience, my personal story. And if it works for you, fantastic. And if it doesn't work for you, look, I'm really sorry. At the same time, what I plan to do in this video is explain to you what I normally tell my patients when I see them in clinic about tinnitus. So in effect, if you watch this video, you don't really need to come and see me about tinnitus anymore because it's all going to be hopefully in this video. You see, tinnitus isn't really my special subject. I have no professional interest in it at all. I normally talk about snoring, sleep apnea and sort of ear surgery. But if you are interested in seeing someone about tinnitus, there's some really good people out there. There's people like Nitesh Patel, uh, Dipesh Mystery, people at the Harley Street Tinnitus Clinic. Uh, also, I've got to say that the Tinnitus Clinic at Romford Queen's Hospital, the Royal National ENT Hospital uh, audiology clinics, the tinnitus clinics there are absolutely amazing. So if you see some of those people, they can really give you good advice, good help with your tinnitus. I think it's important to say also that I'm not going to tell you some new miracle cure or some new technique. It's not that sort of video. This is just me explaining tinnitus in the way I normally explain it. What I would do is if you have tinnitus, go and see your doctor, get checked out for all the things that may cause tinnitus. And at that point, if you have uh, just the sort of normal tinnitus that a lot of people get, then go and see a tinnitus clinic and they'll be able to help you out. Okay, now that I've said that, what I'd like to do is go through a few myths about tinnitus and go through them one by one. So this first thing that a lot of people seem to say, that if you get tinnitus, you've got it for life. I mean, that's just not true. A lot of people hear tinnitus all the time, even transiently. So a lot of people hear, oh, can you hear that? And it sounds like a, a TV left on or something like that. That is tinnitus. Uh, sometimes people hear a ringing noise or a sort of a, a drumming noise first thing in the morning or when they get back from a concert, they hear their ears sort of uh, making this ringing noise. All of these are forms of tinnitus. Sometimes they last short time or a long time or medium, you know, happens a lot to a lot of people. And most people, when they get tinnitus, even after a week or so, two weeks, it seems to go away after a bit. And if you look at the data, only 0.5% of people have tinnitus that's so bad that it intrudes on their life and it makes their life difficult to cope with. There are an awful lot of people who get tinnitus and then it dies down to a point where they can still hear it, but it doesn't bother them anymore. So even if you do have really bad tinnitus and it's really affecting you, I'd see a tinnitus clinic and it should settle down with time. There are things we can do to help you. And I hopefully like something like this might help you as well. So you may be looking on the internet and seeing really sort of scary um, posts about people with tinnitus and it's really ruining their lives. And once you've got tinnitus, you can never get rid of it. That's not true. There are lots of people who get rid of their tinnitus. I got rid of my tinnitus 13 years ago. I've not heard any tinnitus now for 13 years. So it can be done. And a lot of people out there say the same thing. So. So have some uh, hope that this could happen for you. Now, a lot of people think that tinnitus comes from your ears. It's actually not true. Actually, there is a really, really rare syndrome where you can actually hear, if you put your ear to someone else's ear, you can sometimes hear their tinnitus, like sometimes a clicking noise or something like that. Um, but, you know, I've never even done that. I've, I've never seen a patient with that problem. It's really, really rare to get that sort of thing. Most tinnitus, is, is found within the auditory cortex, within your brain. It's not from your ear at all. Uh, one way to prove that is to look at the studies where uh, people have had their uh, nerve cut or they've removed the cochlea, you know, removed their ear completely uh, and their tinnitus doesn't get better, it actually gets worse. So that includes all the people who've had um, exposure to loud noise, musicians, uh, people who've had an explosion nearby, or they've taken chemotherapy that's damaged their ear. All those people, believe that it's their ear that's been damaged. And that's true, the ear has been damaged, but the tinnitus doesn't come from the ear. It comes from uh, some part of the brain, the limbic system, auditory cortex, all those sorts of areas. So a lot of people hear that last statement and say to me, oh, well, you're saying it's all in my head then. And I don't like saying, oh, it's all in your head because it implies that it's uh, that you've gone mad or, or you've got depression, anxiety, and that's why you've got your tinnitus. I don't think it's a, um, a symptom of depression or anxiety. I think tinnitus, or I personally believe tinnitus is more of a sort of bad feedback loop that you get yourself into. And when you're in that sort of loop and you're spiraling away with the noise getting louder and louder, uh, depression, anxiety can 
speed up that process or make it worse. Because when you have depression anxiety, it's very hard to extract yourself from that bad feedback loop, which um, I'll explain later on. Anyway, so enough of that. What I'd like to do now is explain what tinnitus is. Now, I think this chapter, this part of the video, is really, really important because if you don't understand this bit, the, the bit where I try and explain how to get rid of the tinnitus uh, won't make any sense. So please watch this bit first and understand it before you move on to the next chapter. The first thing to say about why people have tinnitus is that we all have tinnitus. Everyone can hear tinnitus all the time. And the way to prove this is that if you get a bunch of people and put them into soundproof rooms, you can uh, tell them to stay in that room until they hear a noise like a ringing or whatever, any noise, and come out when they can hear that noise. Within 15 minutes, 90 plus people, percent of people will come out of those rooms and say, oh yeah, I can hear a ringing noise and well, what was that? Or electrical whine or something like that. Everyone can hear these noises all the time, just that we're not aware of them. So another way to explain this is that our brains are constantly suppressing information from us. So for example, uh, when you put on your shoes or your socks in the morning, you can feel that your shoes are on your feet and you can walk around, but after five minutes or so, one minute even, uh, you stop. your brain stops telling you, oh, by the way, you're wearing shoes. It's not important information. Your brain will let you focus on things like, oh wow, I think uh, I'm a bit late for work or oh, the kids are late for breakfast or you know those sorts of things. So your brain suppresses the information that isn't that important, like, you know, the, the pressure of this jacket around my, my collar or uh, people with earrings or glasses. After a, you know, a bit of time, your brain gets used to it and stops telling you about that information. The same thing happens to sound. A lot of people realize that if you're on an aeroplane, after a bit, you zone out that sort of background noise, which is quite loud. Or, or if you're working at your office and there's a, um, a road by you or lots of other people talking, you can zone all that uh, noise out. That's your brain allowing you to focus on what you want to focus on and suppressing all the other sound information. So another way to describe this is that if you pause the video right now and then um, listened out to what you can hear, you will hear people talking maybe in another room or road noise or something like that. There'll be some sort of sound in the background normally, even birds tweeting. And if you played the video again and listened to me talking to you, you might still be able to hear those birds tweeting or people talking, but you realize that your brain previously was suppressing that, those sounds away from you. You can still hear them because I'm talking to you now and you can still hear them now. But the point is that your brain was suppressing that information so that you could focus on this video. And I think this all starts when we're babies perhaps. So our brains think to ourselves, oh look, this child is only sort of listening to the parents and that cooing noise that those parents are doing. And it's not listening to say something like the heartbeat, boom, 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 boom. We can all hear these noises all the time. So what the brain does is start saying, okay, I'll, because he's reacting to those voices, I'll increase those noises, but I'll suppress this boom, boom noise because he never pays attention to that. And so if you look at people and their hearing tests, you'll see that hearing tests are sort of like a straight line, but it's not true, it's not a straight line. Our hearing is more of a spike like this, and the hearing is best at the top. It's not that our hearing is uniform, you can hear all sounds the same, it's a spike. So what our brains do is allow us to focus in on the small number of frequencies just here, which is around about two kilohertz. And those frequencies are where we can hear speech allowing us to communicate with each other. All the other noises are slowly suppressed out the way because so our brains are focused in on those noises to allow us to understand speech and, and all the sort of normal noises we hear in everyday human life. So only when you go to a completely soundproof room where there's no noise at all, does your brain go, well, there are a bunch of other noises here like uh, this hissing noise or this heartbeat noise. And if you watch uh, YouTube videos about people going to the quietest room in the world, all those sorts of things, you'll see a lot of them will say, oh, I can, after about 10, 15 minutes, I can hear my heartbeat. And some people can actually feel their heartbeat, boom, boom, thumping away in their chest. And it's quite common, you know, a lot of people just suppress that feeling of your heart bump, pumping away in your heart, in your chest. It, you know, we've got so used to this happening that we don't really feel it, but you can actually, if you're in a really quiet room, you can start feeling the, 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 the arteries pulsing around your body. It's a really amazing, you feel like, oh my God, I have an actual organism, not just a head attached to some legs. It's amazing what you know, the body's like. 
but our brains have filtered that information out from most people so you don't, we're not aware of our heart beating anymore. The point is we only hear these noises when it's really, really quiet, when you've walked into a soundproof or a really quiet room, or sometimes when people have an ear infection or, and it's uh, dropped their hearing for a short time, your brain gets bored. It has no idea that you have an ear infection. It's not as clever as we think it is. Our brain is just a bit of flesh sitting inside a skull, it's just sort of getting all these nerves and stimulations and sort of uh, inputs from the outside world. And its job in this sort of bony casing is to try and interpret all these signals. And all it will know is that, oh, I'm not getting as many signals from this year. And he doesn't know that either you've got a lot older and there's a bit of wear and tear and you can't hear quite as well, or you're a musician and you've lost a few frequencies at about 6K. All those sorts of things, the brain has no idea. It assumes that our hearing is great. All it's, all it's noticing is that there's less coming into it. So the brain doesn't really realize what's going on. It just says, oh, I'm not getting any sort of information from this ear anymore, but I am suppressing all these other noises. So perhaps if I uh, release one of these noises, but maybe he's trying to listen to it. So that is the start of you hearing something and you're going, oh, I wonder what that is. So what can happen when you start hearing these noises for whatever reason, that your brain can fall into this Jasperoff or Jasperoff cycle where you can go round and round that sort of loop that I was telling you about earlier. So a very common or a good example of this is that uh, someone young or old, doesn't matter, gets an ear infection and they lose the hearing in one ear for say two weeks or something like that because the ear is all clogged up or maybe wax or something like that. Eventually the wax gets taken out, but during that time when their hearing had been reduced, the brain gets a little bit bored, like I said before, and starts releasing some extra noises. So when you've got an infection and then you start hearing this high-pitched whine or something like that, a lot of people will think, oh God, I've got this terrible infection, it really hurts and I can't hear anything. And now I've got this extra noise on top. Maybe there's uh, some permanent damage happening here. Maybe I'm stuck with tinnitus. I don't know what's going on here. I really need to see a doctor. And that worry, that emotional context to, to an ear infection can start off this cycle that I was telling you about, the Jasperoff cycle. See, what happens is that the brain listens to what you're saying and the emotional context to the uh, responses that you're having to things and goes, oh wow, I've been filtering this noise out since he was a child. Why all of a sudden is he focusing on this? It must be really important. I'm so silly, I shouldn't have filtered this out since he was a baby. Maybe I'll get him to focus in on this. And so the brain incorrectly assumes that you want to hear it because you've got an emotional reaction to it. An emotional reaction is really important to humans. So because you've got an emotional reaction to a noise, the brain incorrectly assumes that you want to hear it. And therefore you start being able to focus in on it. You start listening to it more and you start becoming more sensitive to that noise. You want to hear it more and more. This is obviously the, the exact opposite of what people want to do. They want, they're, they're in bed trying to sleep and there's this funny noise and they're wondering, what is this? And some people go further than that. They hear this noise and go, oh wow, this is tinnitus, isn't it? Oh my God, I, I remember my father had tinnitus and he hated tinnitus, it was awful for him. I've heard that you get tinnitus for the whole of your life and you can never get rid of it. It's terrible. What am I going to do? Is this going to be like this for the rest of my life? Is it going to get louder? Am I going to lose my hearing? Is it a brain tumour? All these sorts of thoughts go through people's minds and it can make that emotional connection to this noise and your brain sees that connection and then therefore makes the noise louder and louder and louder. When I got tinnitus back in I think 2008, 2009, I, I just moved to another part of the country, I started a new job, moved away from all my friends, didn't see my wife as much as, uh, because we were all doing different shifts and it was really difficult and I think that stress and that big change, that life event, uh, set off my tinnitus. And I sort of I can see it now. At the time, I didn't feel stressed or, or upset or whatever at the time. I just had this horrible noise. Actually, the first thing I noticed was um, uh, I thought it was a sort of a, I left the TV on or something. And I walked around the house for ages looking for this TV or this electrical appliance that I left on that was making this noise. It was ages later I thought, oh God, I think I've got tinnitus. I, I knew what tinnitus was. I was the ENT surgeon. Um, but I, Obviously, I hadn't looked into it as enough. So what I did was I went round and round this Jasperoff cycle where uh, I heard the tinnitus, the brain saw that I was getting annoyed by the tinnitus, the brain thought that the tinnitus was um, important, so it made the tinnitus louder, and it cycled back to me, oh my God, it's even louder now, what's happening? And it went round and round, like getting louder and louder, and you know, people like Vincent van Gogh get so desperate, they, they cut their ear off. And, uh, and it's that negative cycle, that sort of horrible sort of loop that people go through that I think causes tinnitus. And what happens is the more times you go around this cycle, the more you're able to lay down those pathways in your brain. It's called brain plasticity. It's the ability to learn new things. People, um, 
maybe maybe just for me, but I felt that I was, when I look back at it, I was laying down pathways or neuronal pathways that allowed me to hear this noise louder and louder. I was focusing in on this noise. And so that previously very quiet noise was becoming louder and louder because I was willing it to do so. That's why I think a lot of people get hyperacusis. Hyperacusis means you become really sensitive to noises. Your hearing has got higher and higher, like people who um, go blind, their hearing can get a bit better. Um, the same sort of thing can happen, I think, in, um, in tinnitus. Your hearing sensitivity wraps up in that one few spectrum, so there's few frequencies that you have. You start hearing it really, really um, easily. And so people go, oh my God, the hairdryer's on, or the, it's so much, the road noise is so loud. Whereas normal people aren't bothered by those sort of noises. But if your hearing has been ramped up because your brain has got into this weird feedback loop, it has to go, oh God, this, this, wait, let's focus in on this extra noise. That's what I think seems to happen in some people. And that thing about Vincent van Gogh cutting off his ear, you know, he was very depressed. And that sort of brings me back to depression and anxiety. If you have depression, anxiety, if you've got depression, it's a, a lot of people think of it as an inability to cope with things in, in, when you get this disease. Or anxiety is that you get really, really worried about things. So if you hear this noise, it's natural for those people with these conditions to find it very hard to pull themselves out of that loop where you, you constantly worry and, and the brain sees that worry and then makes it um, worse. I, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So I'm, I'm, it doesn't matter if the tinnitus came first or the depression came first. It, having depression or anxiety can make it very difficult to pull yourself out of that loop. So what I found for me was that the key to fixing my tinnitus was reversing this Yasparov loop or, or pulling yourself out of it and sort of reversing so you can go back to where you were before, reapplying and suppressing that those noises or starting up those filters again so you can't hear the tinnitus anymore. So let's get on to that bit of the video. So a lot of people will say to me, look, there is no cure to tinnitus, what you're talking about. But I, I guess you're right, there is no cure for your heartbeat. Nobody wants to be cured of their heartbeat. What I'm saying is that not being able to hear your tinnitus or not being aware of your tinnitus, to me, is as good as a cure. Because all, as I said in the previous section, all these noises we've had for the whole of our lives. Uh, and I should say, actually, if you've skipped ahead to this point, please go back to the chapter before, because what I want you to do is understand this there, because this section will make a lot more sense if you understand the, the chapter before this. Oh, sorry, I'll get on with this now. Anyway, like I was saying before, the, the definition of cure in tinnitus is, is slightly vague. But what I'm trying to say is, if you remember that soundproof room experiment I was telling you about before, the idea is to reverse that Yasparov cycle, to reapply those filters, to suppress those noises that our brains uh, think that you want to hear, but what you're trying to do is suppress the noises so uh, you don't hear them anymore because you're correcting the assumptions that your brain was making. Now, a lot of people, what they do is they listen to white noise or the, you know, the noise between radio channels on the old analog uh, radios. The shh, no, actually I'll put a proper noise up here somewhere. Yeah, that, so that noise, that shh noise, if you hear that, that's what we call masking. What you're doing is using that noise so loud that you can't hear your own tinnitus. And if that's working for you, fantastic. You should carry on with that. Whenever you hear your tinnitus, listen to that and there's no need to watch this video anymore because with time, your tinnitus will slowly get better. For me, that didn't really work because I was sort of replacing one annoying noise in my head with another annoying noise from my radio. And it just annoyed me, particularly when I was trying to sleep because I quite like silence when I'm trying to sleep. And what I didn't, what I noticed also is that as my tinnitus got louder, I ended up putting the radio louder and they're sort of competing against two different noises. And I just, it just didn't work for me. If it works for you, like I said, just go for it. But if it's not working for you, well, I'll tell you what I did. What I soon realized when I did a bit more reading that the masking is not there to overcome the noise so that you can't hear tinsel, which doesn't really make any sense to me. What it's meant to do is distract you from the noise inside your head. What you're trying to do is let your brain listen to real noises rather than the noise that's been generated in your head or the heartbeat or whatever. The idea is that what you're trying to do is distract your brain from these abnormal noises in your head and therefore you're sort of reapplying that filter. So what I started doing is listening to things like, um, when I got in from work, I'd normally hear it because the house was quiet without my wife around. Um, I'd turn on the TV or the radio one as soon as I walked through the door because I knew I'd start listening to tinnitus if I didn't do that. It became a habit. And when I was trying to sleep at night, instead of listening to the shh noise, 
I used to turn on the radio, maybe Radio 4 or whatever the equivalent is in, around the world. Or like the shipping news at night. I don't know if you've ever heard the shipping news, but um, in England, the shipping news is rather, it sounds really boring. It's like uh, the shipping news, if you don't know what it is, is uh, little points out at sea and they tell you the weather at different points. And it's said in such a monotone sort of robotic way that I spent my time when I listened to it, it was quite late, about 11, 12 o'clock at night, um, I remember listening to it going, where, did they, where does BBC find these people that can speak like this? And I remember talking to myself about like, ranting to myself, oh my God, where, where are these people? How do they learn to talk like this? And how could they just not do this without bursting out into laughter? And because I was having that little internal dialogue and thinking about the shipping news and not thinking about my tinnitus, the, I, I was distracting myself away from that noise. It's a bit like um, a lot of people when they have mild tinnitus, they don't notice that they've got tinnitus when they're out with their friends, when they're having fun, enjoying themselves, or if they're at work in a, in a difficult task. And it's only when they get home or that when they try and go to sleep and it's quiet, then they start hearing their tinnitus again. But I think the real reason why I like this sort of distraction technique is that the shh noise um, sort of still reminded me that I had tinnitus, whereas distracting myself and sort of making me forget that I have tinnitus seem to work better for me. But it doesn't really matter how you do it. As long as you forget or you can't hear your tinnitus and focus on something else, the more you do that, incrementally you'll notice that your tinnitus gets quieter and quieter and quieter. I mean, they're tiny increments at the start, and at the start it's really quite bad. But the more you don't listen to your tinnitus, the quieter it'll get. It sounds a bit weird to say it, but that's how it seems to work. Because what you're doing is you're reapplying that filter. You're telling your brain that you're not interested in this noise. You, When you hear this noise, you distract yourself away from it. And when you do that, you're telling your brain, I have no emotional uh, impulse to this noise. I've distracted myself away from it. I'm not interested in it. Please start reducing that neuronal pathway that you're laying down filter it out, I'm not interested. And that's the sort of control that you're trying to exert over your uh, your own brain's sort of incorrect assumptions about thinking, oh God, this is important. You're trying to say, no, it's not important. I don't want to hear it anymore. Move on. And although you only get tiny little improvements every day, and sometimes hardly any improvement, but when you do notice a tiny little improvement, you go, oh my God, I actually have control over this. I have some sort of weird little mastery over this. And that gives you a whole lot of more reassurance, makes you feel like, actually, I can influence this. I can change it. Uh, and when you have that feeling of control, it gives you hope and you can keep going and you keep working on it. And noticing even these tiny little improvements every day gave me some hope, gave me some comfort, and it really helped me carry on. Unfortunately, <laughs> the shipping news didn't really work for very long because uh, after a few nights or maybe a week or so of me ranting at the radio uh, internally in my head, I thought to myself, Actually, I've, I've sort of ranted enough. I can't think of anything else to rant about. And I started remembering that I was doing this for the tinnitus rather than me getting annoyed by the shipping news. So, uh, and also being annoyed is not a great idea when you have tinnitus. You try and find something that's fun for you. So what I did was, um, and because also it was making noise as well, and that noise was annoying me when I was trying to sleep. So what I did was I tried something else. I knew it was more about distraction at this point. So what I did was I turned on the uh, small TV in our bedroom, the old CRTs back then, um, and I left on uh, reruns of old uh, TV series. And you know this may show you what sort of person I am, but I used to watch uh, Star Wars um, reruns of Star Wars, uh, the Black Adder series, Red Dwarf, all those sorts of things. And I didn't turn on the volume. I left it on mute but I turned on the, um, the subtitles. And because I have uh, you know, a stumpy, small Y chromosome that doesn't allow me to multitask, I, I, even though I know all the words, I had to read the subtitles because I can't male brain. Um, and so I sat there staring at the subtitles and I knew the storyline, I knew all the words. And although it was nice for me to watch and I'd carry on watching it, it wasn't so entertaining that I couldn't fall asleep and it was quiet. So it was, for me, it was better than the, the noise of the shipping news or the shh noise. So that worked better for me. And because I've only got a tiny male brain, those subtitles were enough to, for me to focus in on that and allow me to distract myself away from the noise in my head. And that, as I said, worked for me. And it meant that uh, the tinnitus with time got quieter and quieter and quieter. There were times, however, where actually the, the TV subtitle muted trick doesn't work for me either. And the tinsel was so loud, it's sort of like screaming in your ear. It generally happened when 
I was sort of tired, hungry, stressed, all, you know, all three, um, which happens quite a lot when you're a doctor. Um, so yeah, if you're hungry, just eat, that's an obvious thing. When you've got one of these things, it, um, it puts a barrier in you, allowing you to sort of focus away from the tinnitus. So eat and try and rest or try and calm yourself down. All those things are really helpful. So what I did was when I was in these situations where it was really loud and screaming my ear, I'd have to distract myself even more aggressively than just watching subtitles on an old Star Wars uh, Empire Strikes Back, which is great, by the way. Watch it if you haven't seen it. But what I did was I distracted myself more aggressively than that. So what I did was I got um, little computer games on my phone or on a laptop, uh, and I played those games. Now, I wouldn't say something like Candy Crush or you know chess or something like that, because it's not, it's not a fast-paced game. You can have time to think between each move. Um, what you need is something that doesn't require thought as such. You, you need to do something which is really fast and just working on instinct like you know sonic the hedgehog or that that weird um there's a program you know i'm showing my age now where you run 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 you going left and right jumping over things and there's something chase temple run something like that i'll try and put a you know it's very boring sorry but games like that where you're using all your attention to to pass and you have to use instinct and swiping or whatever something that where it engrosses you. So, you know, buy yourself a PlayStation 5 or something like that, a fast paced game where you have to use reactions or uh, a more modern thing would be like getting Oculus 2 and playing Vader Immortal or something. Uh, but I wouldn't get uh, World of Warcraft or something because it makes you think you need something fast paced. Anyway, enough about computer games, I'll move on. So what happened was with these very fast computer games that uh, it took the edge off my tinnitus. So after about 20 minutes of playing a game and me, not remembering that I've got tinnitus and I've noticed it's got a bit quieter. I thought to myself, right, now it's quiet enough for me to watch my TV and fall asleep listening to, um, or watching TV and looking at the subtitles and then fall asleep. So I'm not saying that you have to play computer games and you have to play Vader Immortal 3 or you, know, you, or you have to watch Red Dwarf. What I'm saying is that you need to find something that will distract your brain. Uh, some people will want to go uh, looking through the internet looking at handbags and shoes or or talking to their friends or something like that that will distract their brain away from their tinnitus. Do something that will interest you. You've got to choose something that's fun, something that's calming if you can, or something that completely distracts you because those are the things that are going to help you the best, I think, when it comes to trying to ease the tinnitus noise. And the more you ease it, the more you don't hear it, the more you don't remember that you have tinnitus the slowly the quieter the tinnitus will get. And talking about that fun and, and that happy, calm place, if you do have anxiety and you do have depression, it's important that you go and see your doctor and try and get that treated. Now, a lot of people say, no, 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 the tinnitus came first and that's why I'm depressed, which is, that may be true, that's fine. But the point is, you even if you have depression or even if you have low mood because of your tinnitus, it'll be very hard for you to pull yourself out of that loop without fixing the depression anxiety first. So do your very best to get rid of that side. It'll really help you pull yourself out of this negative loop that some people get into. So it doesn't matter, it's not a chicken and egg scenario. If you have uh, worries or anxieties or depression or, or low mood, go and see your GP, get that sorted. Tell them that you've got tinnitus and he'll refer you also to a tinnitus clinic. But it's really important that you sort out both issues. It doesn't matter which came first, just, just get them both sorted because it'll really help you recover from this problem. Now, I was quite lucky. I didn't have any hearing loss uh, and I, not easy for me to check. I went to the audiologist and got them to do a hearing test. But my hearing was sort of normal. I say this, so it's not really, it's like this, but you know what I mean. It, it was a normal flat line, good hearing all the way through. There are some people who have reduced hearing, and uh, as I said before, musicians and their hearing are dropped in one area. And when that happens, it makes it much harder for those people to fix their tinnitus because they're not getting the stimulation their brain is craving for. What you need to do is try and improve your hearing if you can. So an awful lot of people say to me, look, I've got no problems with my hearing. I can hear you just fine. My hearing's not that bad. But when I look at the hearing test, it has dropped in a few frequencies. It may not be enough for them to influence their daily life, maybe not enough to, for them to even notice that they've got hearing loss. But if they do have hearing loss, it's typically the hearing loss, uh, the hearing loss is where they can hear their tinnitus. I say to people, well, actually, it may be worth getting a hearing aid just to improve the hearing in those frequencies, even if you don't have hearing or you don't feel like you need one. All you're doing is wearing the hearing aids 
to help you get rid of the tinnitus because what you're doing is you're allowing your brain to be stimulated in those frequencies that you've lost and therefore your brain's going oh there's other things to listen to now more interesting things like birds tweeting or, or leaves rustling or whatever you're listening to those noises now whereas previously you couldn't because you had hearing loss there augmenting that area that you've lost will allow your brain to be stimulated so therefore the tinnitus will slowly get slowly go away uh, because you're stimulating your brain you're, you're giving it something to listen to and that really helps some people and some people will go well okay i've got rid of my tinnitus with a hearing aid do i have to keep wearing the hearing aid not really i guess not if it's not helping you hearing why bother if it well sometimes we give people hearing aids just to help them get over the tinnitus so that's an important distinction a lot of people go why am i got this hearing aid what's the point i got tinnitus i don't have a hearing problem that's the reason why a lot of people give you a hearing aid and, and if you understand the context behind it, it should make a little bit more sense. Anyway, the, um, the subtitles, the shipping news, the, um, the computer games, I used that sort of distraction technique to slowly reduce my tinnitus. And it took me about, it was really loud at one point, so it took me about six weeks to get to the point where actually I can hear it, but it doesn't really bother me anymore. I could probably live like this forever now with this sort of noise in my head, but because I'm, personality type ENTJ and I just wanted to fix everything. I, I thought to myself, right, I, just to prove it to myself, I'm going to keep going uh, and see if I can get rid of it completely. And to be honest, it took me ages because I kept forgetting, but um, it took me about three or four months after that to, to get rid of it completely. Uh, and it started off with me going, oh, I, I haven't noticed it for a bit. And, and then it came back because I thought about it. And sometimes days would go past and I go, oh, I haven't noticed it. And then it would come back. And silly me, I used to think at the start, I wonder if it's gone away and I'd listen out for it. I mean, obviously knowing what you know now watching this video, that's the wrong thing to do. To try and resist the temptation, just to sort of check if you still have tinnitus, just keep going. The, the days where you don't have tinnitus or the time when you don't have tinnitus will get longer and longer and longer to the point where you've got, le you've got uh, more time away from tinnitus and more time with, and eventually you sort of, months later you go, oh, actually I don't have tinnitus, and it doesn't come back at that point. And it takes a really long time. Um, and I'm not sure if it was three or four months because it sort of, you forget. So the way I did it was I continued distracting myself for you know, months and months. It was quite hard to think of things to distract myself with, but the more I did it, the times when I didn't get tinnitus became longer and longer and longer to the point where I, I forgot that I ever had tinnitus. And it's only when I think back now that, I, oh yeah, I had tinnitus. So that's the idea. What I hope I think I did, I, I created that filter that uh, I think we all have that filters out these noises. And I've reapplied that filter, suppressed those noises so I can't hear it anymore. Uh, even in, you know when I'm trying to sleep at night, I can't hear my tinnitus. And that happens to lots of people. It's not just me, it happens to loads of people. Um, just look at the results from tinnitus clinics. So a lot of people go away, oh, right, yeah, you're right. And then if you call these people back, you know, a year later, say, oh, no, I don't have tinnitus. And they, they forget to mention it. It's not something you want to remember. It's not something you want to go back to. So the voices on the internet will be saying, oh, no, tinnitus is terrible. There are lots of people who say, oh, yeah, tinnitus is fine. I got rid of it. There are an awful lot of people out there. So, so have hope, have some reassurance that it can happen for you. So don't get too stressed about it if you can. Now, all I've been doing is waffling on about uh, these the, the sort of mind tricks that I've been doing on myself. There are some medical therapies out there which can help people with tinnitus, and I'll go through those one by one. So at times I did use something called 180 phase reduction or 180 phase shift. Now, what that is, is that you're um, applying an equal and opposite sound to your tinnitus to cancel out the two noises. Now, it's quite hard to do. And, and at the time, it was sort of relatively easy. What I did was I got an app on my phone. Uh, I think it was called Sound Frequency Generator or, or something similar to that. And what you need to do is as closely and as precise as you possibly can recreate your tinnitus noise uh, that you can hear in your ear on your phone so that you play the sound and it sounds exactly the same as your tinnitus. And the, the more precise you get, the better. So you just make it just perfect. Now it's quite hard because a lot of these uh, noises are slightly broadband in character. But once you get the dominant frequency or if you can do a slight broadband feature on your uh, app, that can make it slightly sort of uh, white noisy in that one or two frequencies. But once you've got it, and it sounds exactly the same, what you need to do is a 180 phase reduction. So that you're, you're creating an equal and opposite sound to that noise. At the time, what I need to do is find another app, transfer 
that noise to this app and then do that 180 phase reduction and then play that back to myself. And that worked quite well because when it was sort of really loud in my ear, and to be honest, I was sort of almost playing around with it, but when when that noise was really loud in my ear, when I played this, the, the noise came down a little bit. I thought, wow, this is actually is sort of suppressing it. And to be honest, I've noticed that after you know some time, my tinnitus would change and it would change ever so slightly. So you have to go, oh God, I have to make a new noise for myself and recalibrate, you retitrate it and, and sort of apply the new noise. It was a bit of a pain moving from app to app and then listening to it. And sometimes it only lasts 10 minutes, but what I liked about it was that it gave me some comfort. It gave me uh, a feeling of control or mastery over my tinnitus. And that to me was really important. It gave me hope that I can influence it. And if I feel like I have control over it, I felt like I could sort it out, I could deal with it. Um, as I said, sometimes it, it only lasted a short time. Sometimes it only just took the edge off because I didn't get the tone exactly right. So it sort of helped. I don't think it's particularly useful. Uh, in the end, I couldn't be bothered with the app to app thing. And, and I ended up playing lots of computer games. But um, if you want to try this now, please go ahead. Unfortunately, the app that does a 180 phase route. I can't find that anymore. I can only find a noise generator, so I can't leave a link to it. But I mean, I'm sure there's a noise generator out there. I did at one point try and make an app, my own app, that would connect these two things together, but I couldn't find anyone to help me do it. Uh, and um, I was, you know, you've seen me trying to put together a snoring app. It's taken me years to do that. This tinnitus app, unfortunately, you can't make anymore because uh, the rules have changed all about this now. Uh, to make an app that was specifically designed to help you reduce your tinnitus is now a medical device, it's not an app anymore. So you have to go through a million loop, uh, hoops and things to, to get to that point where you're allowed to publish an app which is meant to help people with tinnitus. So it's, you know, it's not worth it. And trying to find someone who will do make an app for you for free so you can give it away for free with no sort of income back from it. You know, no one, no, no one will do that. What I want you to do is try and work this out for yourself. So you don't, you know, I got rid of it myself. So um, hopefully you can as well. But if any of you decide to make this app and create it, let me know in the comments and I'll link it to the description. And that way uh, I can sort of promote your app in some way. I did have a patient with a genius idea where he could use the sound generation uh, device to make the noise exactly the same as ear. And then what he had is that he'd sort, he put on active noise cancellation um, headphones. Now he wouldn't connect the phone to the earphones. What he did was he just played it on the outside and left this on um, uh, just playing and actively canceling the noise around him. So it works almost the same way. That noise was actively canceled uh, going into your ear. Now, um, unfortunately he, he couldn't uh, check if it worked because A, he found the calibration quite difficult trying to get the same noise as his ear and B, his tinnitus was slowly going away anyway, so it wasn't worth the effort for him. So, but it might be an idea if you uh, have uh, active noise cancellation headphones and really good ones uh, and you can make the same tinnitus noise, you could try that out and let me know if it works for you. There are some other therapies and I'll go through them now. There's RTMS or repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation, something like that. Basically you get these enormous magnets and you focus this magnetic power on your brain. It's used for helping people with uh, depression and uh, some other problems. But what it does is it sort of influences your um, neuronal chemistry or something like that. And I guess if it's affecting your brain and changing the way your brain works, it might work. And there are trials out there that say that in some people it really does work. Some people get six months of recovery. Uh, some people, you know, only six minutes or something. Um, and it seems to only work in a certain population, not other people. So I. I don't know if it work if it's going to work, and there are published papers out there that say it does work. And if you want to go and sort of look at that, there is I think a place on Harley Street, or well, I'm sure there are places anywhere with uh, RTMS, um, and go and, and try it out if that's what you really want to do. There is a local anaesthetic drug called lidocaine or lignocaine, as we used to call it. Lidocaine, uh, if you inject it through the vein, has this amazing quality of getting rid of people's tinnitus. It just sort of suddenly disappears. So. Uh, it's, it's amazing. People go, oh my God, my tinnitus is gone. But the problem is when you inject lidocaine, it also has the rather nasty side effect of causing your heart to stop and give you a heart attack. It's not something that we would like to use. But uh, again, someone had a, quite a good idea is to get lignocaine, not as an injection straight into your vein, but as a patch. I mean, you can put it anywhere, I guess, but a lot of people put it behind their ear. 
And that lignocaine patch in a trial that I saw seemed to, for about three months or so, seemed to reduce tinnitus in some people. Again, some people it worked for, some people it didn't. Um, and I think people are hoping that lignocaine, those 12 hour patches, were slowly reducing their tinnitus. Uh, it's quite hard to tell because maybe their tinnitus would have got better over three months. It's, I don't, I'm not sure. And normally lignocaine works straight away. I'm a bit fearful of using lignocaine. I don't, I don't like it just in case it affects the heart. But you, it, and I've not seen any further trials about um, lidocaine. But um, if you're interested, speak to your doctor about it or speak to one of these guys I was telling you about, uh, um, like uh, the Tinsis Clinic or other places, and they might be able to point you in the right direction. There's an awful lot of uh, evidence to say that relaxing techniques, med meditation, self-awareness, all those sorts of things do help people with tinnitus. If it works for you, you should definitely do it. It seems to work for an awful lot of people. So learning how to uh, calm your mind down, not get so you know, riled up by this tinnitus can help an awful lot of people. And I think it's worthwhile doing if that's uh, if that you think is your problem. Uh, so meditation and things like that can help. I don't know anything about it, but again, see these tinnitus people, they may be able to help you. There are a variety of other pills and sort of lotions and sort of things that you can do to yourself to try and help you with your tinnitus. I've seen people who are flicking the back of their head or, or doing different massages or using different uh, devices on their ear. Now, I haven't seen any conclusive sort of uh, evidence to say that any of these things work, um, but if it works for you, uh, and you know, a placebo effect is 20% effectiveness. So it improves your, most people will say 20%, I'll take 20% reduction in my tinnitus. Well, then it'd be worth going ahead and doing it. There's nothing saying that, oh, if it, you know, doing this or, or using a laser pointed to your eardrum, you know, all those things, if they feel like they're working for you, then do it. I mean, who cares if it's a placebo effect or not? Well, I don't know anything about tinnitus and nor does anyone else as far as I can understand. If it works for you and it's helping you, even by just 20%, then just do it in my mind. D don't, um, don't worry if the evidence is out there or whatever. Just try it and if it works, great, fantastic. But I hope you found this video useful. Uh, if you know someone who you think it might help, please show them this video or tell them what I've told you. And um, if you want a freebie sort of tinnitus white noise masker, I can send you one for free. Just sign up to my, my newsletter and respond to my letter when I send it out to you, my email, sorry. And uh, I'll give you, I'll send one out to you if, you if I pull your name out of the hat. And I'll leave a link to it in, in the description if you want. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this useful. Do take care. And I hope um, if you have got tinnitus, it gets better quickly. Bye-bye.